Hello, Preston Road family. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. If you're like me, that phrase has been somewhat hard to proclaim this last week. As this week saw our normal lives be interrupted in some new ways. As restrictions became tighter and our normal lives got put on hold once again. For some of us, we've learned that we work for essential businesses, but we're non-essential employees. And for others of us, we learned that we work for non-essential businesses. Those phrases can be somewhat disheartening, but I remind us that we must keep it all in perspective. As we learned later in the week, that even those phrases vary from county to county and certainly from person to person. Speaking of perspective, earlier this week, I was feeling somewhat sorry for myself, well, really for my son and, and our family, as this is his last semester of his senior year in high school. And it's a time when he should be enjoying his final baseball season or thinking about his senior prom or preparing for graduation and, and we should be preparing for the, the senior parent dinner and all these fun things that we're missing out on. And I was feeling sorry for myself and I turned on the news, which I guess if you're feeling bad, probably the news is not the place to go. But on this particular day, it was. As they interviewed a young man who was also a senior in high school, and he lamented the fact that he's missing out on, on those activities that I just mentioned and a few others. But then he said, but I know that there's been generations before me who actually maybe got to do those senior traditions, but then once they graduated, they went off to war. So I guess my situation could be worse. Wow, that put it into perspective. That helped me take off my goggles of self-pity and look at things a little differently. So my prayer for you this morning is that you can take off the goggles of self-pity and that you can look at the world through the lens that you should as a child of the Most High, as someone who is so important that the Creator sent His Son to redeem us and save us. I hope that you can look at this day and you can say the words like the Apostle Paul, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Paul wrote those words from a prison cell because he had the proper perspective. This is the day the Lord has made, so we should rejoice and be glad in it. Whether you're like me and just inconvenienced because things are, are not normal, or maybe you're going through a hardship, facing some financial crisis or some other crisis related to the situation, or maybe you're in that third category of someone who's dealing with true grief because you're separated from people you love or maybe a loved one has actually contracted the virus and is dealing with that. Whatever your situation, I encourage you to remember the, Lord, the Lord's words, do not be afraid. Take courage and rejoice. I do want to end this morning by, by just issuing a few thank yous. I'd like to say thank you to all of you who have volunteered to run errands or, or pick up groceries for some of our senior members. It has been awesome to see the way that you guys have mobilized, and, and it's been encouraging. I know our senior members have appreciated it, and I've also appreciated it, seeing you be the hands and feet of Christ. I also want to say thank you to our elders and to Andrea Dyer, our CFO, for the way that they take fiscal responsibility very seriously and that they have diligently worked to prepare our church for a time such as this. I also want to say thank you to those of you who have continued to give generously. As Farland mentioned last week, even though our doors are closed, the needs continue, and we've found many opportunities to serve and to give to people in need. We expect that those needs will continue in the weeks ahead, so I do ask that those of you who are able, please continue to give, and we assure you that your money will be put to good use. Finally, I'd like to say thank you to all of you in our church family who are in the medical profession. I've spoken with a few of you this week and I've heard 
and you've told me about the stress that you're under. So please know that our church is very proud of you, that we're praying for you, and that we are encouraged to see the way that you can care for our community because you truly are an instrument of God's peace and his healing hands. May God watch over you. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.